it's January. It's the start of the new year, guys. And there's a couple of things I think about in January. It's winter time. Whenever I think of winter, I think of a couple of other things. I think of hot chocolate. I think of really cozy fires. I think about snowball fights. And I think about the band Agalock. Now, of course, we just talked recently about the new Agalock album, Marrow of the Spirit. And on my old account, and in a video that I re-uploaded a little bit earlier, uh, uh, last year, should I say, we talked about the mantle. Well, it's time to finally talk about the album that's in between that, entitled Ashes Against the Grain. This is an album that was released roughly four years ago, and it was actually amongst one of the best of that particular year. It was an album that was very highly praised, especially on my own personal list, which, well, unfortunately, you guys couldn't see, considering I wasn't on YouTube at that time. And you might be wondering why. Does it really measure up to the mantle or to marrow the spirit, or is this just an album that was really prominent and really praised on a weak year in metal? Well, I'll say this. To address the first point, the mantle is definitely superior to this album, in my opinion at least, in, well, almost every way. The mantle is able to capture a unique atmosphere that really I can pinpoint and target as perhaps the pinnacle of uh, Agalock's current career, out of their current body of work. As far as Marrow of the Spirit is concerned, the two are kind of on par with one another. I may give Marrow of the Spirit just a very slight edge, but that might just be because of a newer bias. However, with Ashes Against the Grain, they definitely got that whole wintry, desolate atmosphere down to a particular science. This is something that you saw with the mantle, especially near the end of it. You definitely got the feeling of that kind of cold, atmospheric, wintertime uh, whole scenario, especially with uh, song titles such as The Lodge, and with a lot of wintry and snowy ambience surrounding these particular tracks. You definitely get that same feel with Ashes Against the Grain, almost as though it was a continuation of, the, of where the mantle left off. And this is something that makes this album very interesting. Now, compared to the mantle, Ashes Against the Grain also progresses in a little bit more of a heavy direction. And this is something that really can be seen as a consistency amongst Agalock's more recent projects, as Marrow of the Spirit has definitely been their heaviest release since their early black metal works from the late 1990s to the early 2000s. So, with that being guys said, it's definitely the man in the middle. It's the one that bridges the gap between the experimentation that you saw in the mantle with that same raw power uh, that you see with Marrow of the Spirit. It's kind of the meeting of the minds where Marrow of the Spirit really put them both together, put them in a giant pot, stirred it around a little bit, and bam, voila, Agalock soup. Whereas with the mantle, you saw a little bit more of the straight edge experimentation that's done with a little bit more of a raw ferocity that was a little bit more well documented with their earlier records. Now, this is an eight track affair that's definitely spotlit by the three track finale, Our Fortress is Burning. However, this doesn't mean that the tracks that preceded are any slouches. Falling Snow and Fire Above Ice Below are two of probably the best songs in Agalock's catalog. And whenever you consider some of the songs that you've seen, especially on the mantle, such as In the Shadow of Our Pale Companion, well, that's a pretty tough act to follow. So you definitely have to give the band credit. They were certainly on top of their game for the time frame whenever they authored and released this particular record. Now let's address the second part of my initial statement. Was this something that was just strong during a weak year of metal in 2006? Well, whenever you consider that my 2005 album of the year went to a newcomer, the band Communic, and 2006 featured another release by Communic as well as releases from Opeth, uh, amongst others, well, no. This is a strong album on a year that, well, was relatively strong. In fact, would you like to know how strong it was? Give me just a minute. Well, let's take a look here. I mean, crap. There's Communic, there's Wolverine, there was a Novembra album that was released that year, Iron Maiden's A Matter of Life and Death, Amorphous' Eclipse, and that is The Conductor's Departure, which is, by the way, a more recent death metal legend, Great Cold Distance by Catatonia, Celtic Frost's Monotheist. <laughs> I mean, even All That Remains the Fall of Ideals is a strong album. I even have to uh, completely agree with that. So as you can see, 2006 was actually a really good year for metal. So the fact that Agalock CD is able to size up, not to mention be on the top of some lists, most notably my best friends, well, it really says a lot. So, even though this record may not size up to the mantle, and even though because of the newness factor, as I like to call it, or the, the more recent uh, uh, syndrome, so to speak, 
Uh, maybe Marrow of the Spirit may actually eclipse Ashes Against the Grain, in my opinion at least, at this particular moment. The album's no slouch. As I said, this contains some of their best material. I mean, Falling Snow is one of the songs where if you're walking through Falling Snow while listening to this on, say, an iPod or a CD player, the mood is perfect. The atmosphere is beautiful. The guitars still are very crisp and raw. There's a lot of ferocity still on this album. However, you can also see where that little bit of experimentation left over from the mantle. That mantle hangover was still there. And it's especially prevalent on tracks uh, such as the three-part Our Fortress is Burning finale. So, overall, this is a welcome addition to the catalog. Not to mention a very strong one. A lot of people may argue with it. A lot of people may say that it was a little bit too loud or a little bit too... Uh, easy going, more free flowing, not exactly something that's all of that diverse. It's something that maybe uh, might be lacking in that particular diversity department as compared to the mantle or marrow of the spirit. But if you look at it straightforward as a straightforward album, if you look at it for particularly what the band was going for, not necessarily comparing against the remainder of their career and their craft, it's pretty damn good. If you haven't checked it out already and you've checked out marrow of the spirit, or if you're a newcomer to the Agalock lore, check this album out. That's my seal of approval.